Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to make photos look like retro style color pencil drawings that were popular in the 1970s and 80s. This technique allows us to replace our photo with another without having to redo any of the effects. Before we begin, if you want to know as soon as I upload new Photoshop tutorials, smash that subscribe button and please remember to click like. I provided this paper texture that you can download from the link in this video's description or project files. Open a photo you'd like to use for this project. I downloaded this one from Shutterstock. The first step is to place it onto the paper texture. If your move tool isn't active, press V on your keyboard. Drag it onto the tab of the paper texture. Without releasing your mouse or pen, press and hold the Shift key as you drag it down and release. Pressing Shift kept the photo centered over the paper texture. To resize it, open your Transform tool by pressing Ctrl or Command T. At the top, make sure the chain link icon is active between the transform's width and height. This links them together. Place your cursor over the W or the H. It'll immediately change to a scrubby slider. Drag it to the right or left to increase or decrease your photo's size. To reposition it, just drag your image. Then press Enter or Return. If you want to crop your document, open your rectangular marquee tool and drag it over your image to the dimensions you want your illustration to be. Go to Image and Crop. Deselect it by pressing Ctrl or Command D. We'll convert our photo into a smart object so we can modify it non-destructively and replace the photo with another without having to redo the effects. To do this, click the icon at the upper right of the Layers panel and click Convert to Smart Object. Go to Filter, Sharpen, and Unsharp Mask. This increases the image contrast along the edges. Make the amount 150%, the radius 3 pixels, and the threshold 0 levels. Go back to Filter, Stylize, and Oil Paint. Make the Stylization 2 and the Cleanliness, Scale, and Bristle Detail 10 each. Check Lighting. Make the angle approximately 120 degrees and the shine 0.2. Go back to Filter one more time and click Filter Gallery. Open the Artistic Folder and click Poster Edges. Make the Edge Thickness 10, the Edge Intensity 0, and the Posterization 6. This adds thickness and depth to the strokes. Let's collapse the smart filters to save some space in the Layers panel. Click the New Layer icon to make a new layer. We'll fill it with 50% gray by pressing Shift plus the F5 key at the top of our keyboard or by going to Edit and Fill. Open the Contents list and click 50% gray. Go to Filter Noise and add noise. Make the amount 50%, Gaussian and monochromatic. Change the blend mode to overlay. Reduce its opacity to 80%. We want to place the paper texture above this layer. To do this, unlock the paper texture and either manually drag it to the top or press Ctrl or Command and the right bracket key on your keyboard twice. Change its Blend Mode to Multiply. Make your subject active. Next, we'll create a soft vignette surrounding our subject. Open the Elliptical Marquee tool, place it at one of the corners, and drag it to the opposite corner. Go to Select, Modify, and Feather. Feather it 100 pixels. Click the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection next to your subject. Before we do the next step, which is to add back in areas of the illustration through the layer mask, let's save our image as a snapshot, which we'll use when we're ready to replace our photo with another. 
To do this, open the History panel. If you don't see it, go to Window and History. Click the icon at the right and click New Snapshot. Then click OK. Open your Brush Tool and Brush Picker. Pick a soft, round brush. We'll adjust the size of the brush in a moment. The hardness is 0% and the opacity and flow are 100%. The difference between opacity and flow is this. Opacity controls the transparency of the paint, while flow controls the speed at which the paint is laid down, much like painting with a spray paint can. To make our brush bigger or smaller, make sure the caps lock key is off and press the right or left bracket key on the keyboard. Brush over areas of your subject that you want to reveal back. If you want to reveal them back more gradually, reduce the brush's opacity, adjust its size if you need to, and brush over those areas. Before I show you how to replace our subject with another, let's save our image as a snapshot. Scroll up to the top section of the History panel and click the snapshot you saved earlier, which is just above the one you just saved. Notice our layer mask is the original soft oval vignette without any brush strokes added to it. Double click the smart object to open the original photo. To replace it with another photo, go to File and place Embedded. Open the folder that contains the photo, click it, and click Place. To size it, go to the top and drag the scrubby slider over the width or the height. Reposition it and press Enter or Return. Close the Open Smart Object file, and when you see this message, click Yes to save the changes. Make the layer mask active, and brush over areas of your subject that you'd like to reveal back. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.